for that kind of introduction, and I'm glad actually that uh, Mike uh, preceded me. Actually, what I wanted to emphasize is really a good example of um, the, what the, the complementary, the, the computational institute and the research computing center, because what the tools that he just mentioned, those tools are available at the research computing center, where then, when you're working with these fellows at the computational institute, you can come and basically have access to them, get the training on how to use them, and then be able to uh, conduct the, the, the research. So just to give you a little bit of uh, into background on the research computing center, it was created about two years ago to basically enable access to high-end computing and visualization resources. And this was not just to have access to computing resources, but also to the technical support and then uh, education and training. We run a little workshop, and it's also about how to use those resources. I think for us, is we, we view all of that uh, together. And i uh, give you just a little bit rough sense of the hardware we have. Uh, we, we have what we call the high end, what we call the tightly coupled. There are people who want to run, let's say, thousands of cores. I think that Mike was talking about. Some of them are tightly coupled where you need to talk to each other, uh, where you use things like message passing interface or Swift. Uh, and then you also have what we call loosely coupled. Let's say we have thousands of MATLAB runs. We don't need to talk to each other or mathematical runs. So those are really loosely coupled. We also have hardware that will support uh, large shared memory. We have up to a terabyte, for example, in core memory, for example, to just can run one calculation. We also have what we call GPUs, all these emerging technology, uh, Xeon Pi, what Intel introduced. And then we recently also stood up uh, a, a MapReduce cluster. Uh, we all talk about high-end computing, but also we like to emphasize big data is actually real. Things that is talking about here, if you look at the amount of data one can collect from the city or sensor, is really, really uh, a big. And we are start seeing a lot of the, those applications coming from the social sciences and uh, school and, and so forth. And then we also, um, give uh, access to maintain our community software. Some of them are commercial, but anything that is open source we will support. But it's commercial, then if there's a license, then we'll have it available RCC. And then we have for also have a data visualization lab. That data visualization lab actually is connected to the big cluster, our flagship class is called Midway, and then so that you can basically do, be running a simulation and be visualizing your data uh, at the end. Um, so to give you a little bit of a glimpse of some of the application really uh, that uh, people are running, I just mentioned mine, but there are a number of also tools that are being developed here at the Computational Institute that we really value, and I really want to single out Global Online. I was, uh, we have it available today, you can use it at RCC. I've always encouraged people, uh, we need to use those tools that are coming out of CI for us we to show our, our peer institution that we are leveraging them more than they, than they do. I actually introduced, I was at Brown recently, moving data, and, and then I got an email by the time I got back that the way, the way they were running the, the, the data was like, they got almost four times the speed of what they were receiving. So these are tools for us that are really seamless, we are making it seamless, and we are allowing the collaboration that are happening here. And those are, are, are happening here to see here. So just to give you a, more, an exa a, a sense of some of the research, they really span everything from physical sciences, biological sciences, social sciences, uh, and then humanities, book school, law school, and even the high school, actually. Um, we have people doing a lot of large scale with Markov, Chen, Monte Carlo, they are doing finite element analysis, really running for this scalable MPI code. Uh, we also have people in the, in, the, in, the, in the humanities and social science, actually, my couple of my favorite uh, uh, projects that people worked on, uh, there was one Spinosaurus uh, from, that was uh, in a museum in Italy that could not be sent here uh, to Chicago. So what we did, they sent us a bunch of thousand CT scans to here. Of course, we used Globos Online to transfer the data. And then we did a reconstruction on prayer science library. And then the, uh, the faculty took it, and then at that time, the hard lab was not available. 3D printer. And that uh, duplicate is really in the, one of the paleontology lab here that you can go see. It. All that was done really through the wire and we did the reconstruction and then 
that have made it better developable here. Another favorite of mine is uh, there was a, a research group studying uh, the decline of coffee house in London around 17th century to 19th century, collected a huge amount of data, but they could not make sense of it. They really wanted to map where they said the engineer were gathering a big data problem. So we took that, created some tools, and, and then used uh, some geospatial even to map it on the geospatial map of where those people were mapping. And you also have uh, people doing MATLAB um, here that uh, were running five, two days just to get one result. Work on uh, some of those projects and then reduce it to two to three minutes. And then you can understand how it enables, opens up to do some of the science that we could not be able to do. So I'm giving all these examples, we have in the physical science area a broad range, in the astrophysics in particular. Recently we moved 100 terabytes of data to Chicago from the DS project, run some simulation, and then we're able to distribute 70 terabytes to other collaborators of particular projects. Why am I giving all this is to say there's a range of projects that really you can find, basically we can span the interest of any of you, uh, that we just really encourage you to come up and, and work with the researchers. They are cool projects. Believe me, it's not really, I mean, some of them are so cool even ourselves sometimes when we are excited to see we can enable some of this. Um, this. And then the students are, when I say the students, is not really graduate student or undergraduate. We found some great undergraduate students, great graduate students. I think the, the, the talent is here is really tremendous. It's just to be aware that don't be shy. As a matter of fact, I'd like to say we have good toys. And something I didn't uh, mention, we also have emerging technologies. We are partnering with all these companies, Intel, IBM. Before the, uh, the hardware could be even released, uh, to be available to us. So for them, we have the K40 GPU the next generation of uh, Interzion be available. And then if you, are, we are thinking also getting an ARM, I think it's a processor that is in your cell phone that can be computed. So all this is to allow some of people who just wanna uh, work on the full hardware, or even some of our own hardware, we're trying to find some students to write script, and it helps you learn the, 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 the language, and then it's always good to learn on doing something and then sometimes approaching this faculty to say, I'm interested in this, I just want to work with you. Just believe me, uh, they'll be more than happy to, to help you. And if you don't, just let us know, we'll help you out. Thank you. <laughs>